Well, hello everybody. It's UXW Bill here again. After another several weeks worth of uh, not making videos, here I am to amuse you all with another video. As you can see here, I have a uh, computer in a mini or mid tower case. I guess you could call it a mid tower since it's got the third drive bay here. Anyway, um, this is this is another state of the art computer. This is something that someone gave me recently. A friend of mine gave this computer to me along with another one. And this computer is a good old Pentium 233 megahertz with MMX system. It's really not all that interesting for any kind of practical use anymore, but it worked just fine. So I hated, you know, why why waste it? Why run it over or blow it up or burn it or do something like that when it still works? perfectly fine. I was sure I could find something to do with it, and I did. What I ended up making out of this computer is a mono wall. Mono wall is a software package that bases itself on the free BSD operating system. It's a, fi it's a firewalling package that allows you to control the flow of network packets over the TCP IP protocol between two or more network cards. So you can build some pretty advanced rules. The thing has a built-in web administration interface. It's very capable, and it really doesn't take much of a computer to run it. So that's what I've turned this computer into. This is now my mono wall box. Now, I have a perfectly good uh, Buffalo wireless router that's actually running the DDWRT firmware, which is something you ought to look into if you're looking to take a uh, wireless router that's supported, or even a wired router that's supported, if any are, and turn it into something that sells for maybe forty to sixty dollars to something that has the capabilities of a unit costing thousands of dollars. So I don't need this particular machine to be an internet facing firewall. Instead what I want to do with this, I do computer consulting on the side and have for many years. And a necessary evil of doing computer consulting on the side is dealing with people who, whether intentionally or not, have made a mess out of their computer with viruses and malware. Now a lot of this stuff I use ye old Desk Pro EN down here to deal with. I hook the hard drive up in here as a slave and deal with a lot of the malicious software right then and there because what doesn't get a chance to load at startup time when the operating system is completely bypassed it's a lot easier to remove some of that crap. But sometimes, especially when you're trying to verify that a machine is really and truly fixed, that there's not going to be some kind of a, a rogue pop-up or some kind of a malicious software reinstallation come along and surprise you and ruin your whole day, sometimes you need to get the machine hooked up to the Internet so you can see what's going on and if it's really working the way it ought to be. You might also need to have it hooked up to the Internet to update people's antivirus software if they've been lax about doing that or even to replace their antivirus program with something better. Well that's what this mono wall computer can help me do. I've put two network cards in the back of this, both of them Intel 10100 PCI cards because I have a really big box of those. No comments on the decor of the room please. There's a lot of work gets done in here so cleanliness is secondary. Anyway Mono wall can be set up such, you know, I don't want to I don't want to plug a strange computer into my private network and I won't. And historically that means I've had to take the computer back to its owner before I could plug it into an internet connection and verify whether or not it worked. Well, with this, with mono wall, there is a predefined rule set within the program that allows computers behind the mono wall to get out to the internet, but they can't touch anything else on any other private network that all the rest of these trustworthy machines over here are on. So I've got it set to do that and in future I'm going to tighten it down even tighter than that. I'm going to make it to the point where basically if it's not happening on ports 80 for web access or 21 for FTP, it isn't going to be happening. I'm going to block P2P, I'm going to block networking for Windows, basically anything I can think of that is not required to get a formerly sick machine out to the internet and finish patching it up and making it well again. That's what this machine is going to end up doing. And although it's only a 233 megahertz Pentium, by firewall and router standards, that's actually a pretty fair amount of computing power. I've got about a 12 megabit internet connection coming into this house, and this thing can switch packets between network cards at basically that speed. I don't know how much higher than that speed it will go, but I wouldn't be surprised if it could get awfully close to saturating a 100 megabit Ethernet line. 
Anyway, let me show it to you in action. I'll get it into place down there where it's going to live. Although this is, a, is an old system, um, it's happy to boot without its keyboard, and it doesn't seem to care too much about not having a monitor. So I'm just going to put it down there and plug it into a uh, network cable for my private trustworthy network, which heads out to the Internet. And then I have this switch here, which will be where I plug in untrustworthy computers that are plugged into the other network card on the back of this machine. So let's see it in action. And here, for all of you who are curious, is a quick look at the internals of my mono wall machine. This is um, an SIS 5598 based motherboard. Now I know there's some of you that from my motherboard component repair video said you didn't really care for SIS chipsets. I don't I don't have a whole lot of experience with them outside of the old 496, 497 from the 486 era. But we have 128 megabytes of EDO 60 nanosecond SIMs there. We have 128 megabytes worth of those. And then there's the SIS 5598, which is really not a bad chipset. I was able to scare up the data sheet for it, and you'll notice it's a single component, which other chipset makers are only starting to reach that point today by moving the memory controller and video into the processor. This has integrated video. Anyway, the only thing that's really kind of brain dead about this chipset is that for whatever reason, devices installed in the ISA slots are able to completely preempt both of the IDE channels. The pins for the IDE channels and the pins for the ISA slots are actually multiplexed on one on top of the other. And so the ISA bus gets priority. So if you have something on the ISA bus, which this system doesn't, so it's a moot point, but if you did and it was sitting there and it was jabbering and using the bus unfairly, it would probably hamper your disk I.O. performance. But all things considered, it's really not a bad little chipset, and it'll, it certainly seems to be stable for this application. So, what the heck. And there it is, in place and booting up. And in case you're wondering, the little speed display down there has been set up to display FW as best it can for firewall. Now, back up here at the other end, of course, got the uh, network switch, and right now I'm configuring the thing with my MacBook. Basically, the idea here is to make sure that this thing is, is, is as secure as possible so that nothing malicious can try to reprogram your firewall into having unexpected behavior, which is at least theoretically possible. To help counter that, I've chosen a strong password. I've enabled it so the administration interface only works over a secured session. And I've cut down all the unnecessary services. So things ought to be pretty tight on this end. And now, with the way things are set up, this machine that has just finished being cleaned of all of its malware and viruses and things is on its own little isolated network that can go out to the internet on a prescribed number of ports. I'm only allowing HTTP, Secure HTTP, and FTP, and um, also DNS, so it can do DNS lookups, otherwise you could only get to things by knowing the IP addresses. Anyway, my local network is completely isolated from this machine. If this machine is going to do anything the way I've got the firewall rules set up down here on the monowall machine, this thing can only go out to the internet. Can't do anything else, can't bother any of my other computers. So things are pretty well isolated. I may tweak and tune my rule set as things go on and I see how well it works, but for right now, this is definitely a better approach than what I had before. And, of course, this is just one of many things that you can do with MonoWall. There are lots of others, and, of course, I don't claim to be an expert on all of them. And I have probably only scratched the surface of what it's capable of. But that's just to give you an idea of yet another thing that you can do to keep an old computer out of the landfill and keep it useful.